He introduced me to an elderly couple. He was a railroad worker. They were very ordinary people in the city of Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, they were English. They, uh, they had uh, a non-Canadian accent. And I, I got to know this couple very well and their son who made a real mark in China in missionary work. I remember the first night that uh, these friends took me to their to the humble house where this couple lived and as we went in the, the husband met us at the door and he always had a radiant smile. He's a great chap. Uh, I think he was what you call a cockney. He he dropped his H's. And uh well anyway. And he uh, he excused his wife. He said, uh, she'll be out in a few minutes. She's in her prayer closet. And I gathered later on that she spent a lot of time in her prayer closet. But she came out in a little while, and she too was radiant. And uh, she greeted us, and in her simplicity and, and her spiritual comprehension, she said, I, I have just been interceding for China, and I have seen thousands of Chinese pressing into the kingdom of God. And I oh, wow. Uh, what have I got into here? This lady comes out of a room in this little house out in the suburbs of Winnipeg, and somehow she thinks she's mixed up with something going on in China. I don't know. But I do know now. And I'm satisfied that when that little cockney lady stands at the judgment seat of Christ, and you've heard me tell this story, that you're going to bear witness that she probably, in her intercessions, was in the mystery of the government of God involving prayer, that she was literally liberating thousands of Chinese. I believe in those things. I'm a, I'm a fruit of prayer.